Hey everybody, this is Peter with AlphaChimp and this is part of our ongoing series exploring brain-based learning and visual facilitation. And the title of this little video is very important to me because it's something I struggle with, as many will attest, and it is remembering stuff. So I don't know about you, but oftentimes this is what the inside of my brain looks and feels like, a little bit cluttered. And so um, today we're going to explore a model that is used by educators to identify ways that we can structure learning, both for ourselves and for others, that accommodates the different processes that the brain requires in order to keep track of all that stuff. And uh, so the name of this little video and this series of three is Bloom's Taxonomy and Visual Knowledge management. So what is Bloom's taxonomy? This is a very complex model that started being developed in the 50s to describe and break down the different learning styles and teaching techniques in structuring learning. And I am not an academic and I am not a researcher. And I also have a hard time remembering stuff. So this particular model is pretty complex for me to remember. So what I'm going to do today is uh, address just a section of this model and uh, give you a mnemonic and a simple way of remembering a little bit more about about this part of Bloom's taxonomy. I'm going to ask you to just keep in mind three images. So this is the first image. It is a three-toed sloth. Think you got that? A three-toed sloth. The next two images kind of go together as part of this model and it's a really simple drawing of a cake that's an easy cake to draw and an umbrella in the rain. And you'll see how those fit together. So a three-toed sloth, an easy cake, and an umbrella in the rain. All right, let's start with this guy, the three-toed sloth. Okay, let's pretend that uh, the three-toed sloth went to the uh, podiatrist and had his claws clipped. And so uh, this would be his footprint without those big, massive toenails. Just a really simple footprint. It's got the three toes up there. It's got a little foot pad in the center and then uh, a heel and a middle part right there. So that's the outline of our model. And what this model is going to be used to describe is cognition. So this is just a section of Bloom's taxonomy. It has to do with cognition and a way that I like to remember cognition is by drawing some cogs in a machine and uh, so cogs only work if they fit together nicely and the job of a cog it's a little wackadoodle cog but the job of a cog is to help complete or be part of a process and to get some work done. All right, so if these are our cogs in the machine here, cognition involves using the senses and sensory input in order to feed signals to the brain and more importantly, to make sense of those signals in a way that is useful. So returning back to our little model here for cognition, um, I'm, do you remember the three images? They had the three-toed sloth, so we already used him for the footprint. And then the other two images were an easy cake and an umbrella in the rain. An easy cake and an umbrella in the rain. So I just used this mnemonic in order to remember the parts of this model so I can recreate it. And then here are the actual parts. And um, this is part of the Bloom's taxonomy that deals with cognition. And today we're going to just focus on this bottom part right here, which is memory. Um, but all of these build on each other. So we have information, signals, data that comes in that we need to remember. We need to be able to recall or find that data or that information. Next up the rung is to understand what it is and to interpret it. Then we apply it to something useful. And this is where the three toes of the sloth come in is the application has three parts. We can use that information or that data to analyze a situation, to evaluate, is it good, bad, happy, sad, dangerous, non-threatening, important, and to create things. 
And this is a useful model if you're building a learning um, engagement or environment, or if you're facilitating a process um, to really understand what tools you're using and what part of the, the cognitive process uh, you're applying those tools to. So once again, we're gonna just focus on memory. I'd like to invite you to look around and ask yourself, what are the tools that you use every day or on a semi-daily basis to remember important things. For me, it involves my cell phone, which is a primary recording device now, not just for um, photos, but also for voice messages, text, contact information. I always have some sort of journal or sketchbook, usually a moleskin. These are lying all over my house and my studio. And then in the last year uh, or year and a half, I've started using the Action Method notebooks. And the Action Method notebooks are designed by Behance and are really based on uh, this part, you know, understanding, kind of evaluating and analyzing and creating notes and then deciding what to do next. And these are the action steps. So these are my my semi-analog uh, tools that I use, of course, the um, mobile phone is a digital tool, it's an appliance, really. But between the journal, the action method, and the mobile phone, that's what I use to collect things. Then I was thinking, what are the top three digital tools that I use pretty much every day in order to remember all these different aspects? And it's clustered in this way. So here are my three primary tools. I use a bookmarking tool called Delicious, which is free. The second is Evernote. And this has been around for about four or five years. And this is really now my functioning brain. Evernote exists in the cloud and I use it to take photographs, make notes, clip web pages, and it all goes into Evernote. And then Evernote will sync with my phone and also my laptop, my iPad, pretty much any device. Um, and what is really cool about Evernote is it will do a search within an image. So if I take a snapshot of a whiteboard or a journal page, I can do a search for a word. And if that word is written clearly, it will find that word within an image. Incredible. And then for contacts for people, I used LinkedIn. And at first I was pretty lackadaisical about LinkedIn and uh, didn't really see people using it except when they were out of a job and they were trying to quote network in order to get a job. And, but now and more and more I'm using it as a primary contact tool. When I go to conferences now, if I get people's business cards, I look them up on LinkedIn first and send them an invite to LinkedIn because as they move through different corporations, different parts of the world or the country, they tend to update their LinkedIn profiles, which means it's the most accurate way to contact them. And it already has a built-in messaging system there. So these are my top three physical tools and digital tools. And I'd like to invite you in the comment sections below to let us know what are your top three physical tools and digital tools for remembering stuff. And in the next video in this series, we're going to look at more tools and more models for understanding and applying ideas. Thanks a lot.